Lesson 13.2. This is the area of rectangles and squares. And it's really important you saw the video 13.1 before this, and these videos are linked in the description. Area is the number of squares needed to cover a flat surface without gaps or overlaps. Area is measured with unit squares, such as one inch square units, one centimeter square units, one foot square units, and so on. A square unit has four equal side lengths of one unit each. So it could be one inch units, or one centimeter units, or one foot units, one meter units, etc. For unit squares, one square inch has sides that are one inch each. One square centimeter has sides that are one centimeter each. The base of a two-dimensional figure can be any side. It's written as the letter B in the formula we use to find area. So we can use this side as the base. We could use this one as the base or even the top or this side and the height is the measure of a perpendicular line segment from the base. So if this is the base, then that would be the height. And if this was the base, that would be the height, or that side could be the height. It's perpendicular. And it's written as the letter H in the formula to find area. The area formula is A for area, an equal sign for is equal to the base times the height. And remember we learned in video 13.1 that we can use this floating dot to mean multiplication because if we use an x it might be confused with a variable x. Remember variables take the place of an unknown amount in their letters of the alphabet. So we can use that floating dot to mean multiply. We have a base of five units and a height of two units we would multiply 5 times 2, and the area would be equal to 10 square units. So we write square units if we don't know if that's inches or centimeters or meters. We just know that it's that number of units. And remember, perpendicular lines and perpendicular line segments form right angles. We have the little box here showing it's a right angle. We learned that back in 10.3, and that's linked in the description if you missed it. So we use the formula area is equal to base times the height. For this long skinny rectangle, the area is equal to 16 times 1. That's 16 square units. There's 16 squares in this rectangle. We could also use this as the base and say it's a base of 1 and a height of 16. It's still 16 square units. For this rectangle, we can say the base is 8 and the height is 2. We do 8 times 2, which is also 16 square units. We can also do 2 times 8 to be 16 square units. This square has a side of 4. That means all the sides are a 4 because it's a square, right? We do 4 times 4. That's 16 square units. So notice that these are all 16 square units, but they look different from each other, don't they? We can use any side as the base, then the side perpendicular to it will be used as the height. For rectangles, we can think of the base, B, and the height, H, as length, L, and width, W, because length and width are perpendicular. We can write the formula for area as A is equal to the length times the width. We can also write it where the L and the W are right next to each other because in algebra, two letters together, side by side like this, means to multiply their values. So we don't even really need the dot. If we want to, we can write it like this. We have a length of six feet and a width of three feet. We multiply six times three, that's 18 square feet there are 18 squares covering its surface. We can find the area of a square by using the formula area is equal to side times side. We have S times S for side times side. 
we know a square has four same side lengths. So even if there's just one here as six centimeters, we know they're all six centimeters. We would multiply the side times the side, which would be six times six. It would be 36 square centimeters. We see it's labeled as centimeters. We write that it's square centimeters. We need to always label the answer with the type of units. Square inches or square centimeters, square feet, square meters, etc. We need to find the area of this rectangle. Now look, we don't have any squares inside, but that's okay, we don't need them. We can use base times height or length times width. We can see we have a base of nine meters and a height of 12 meters. We just do nine times 12. That's equal to 108 square meters. We can also write it as 108 and then SQ for square and M for meters. But make sure to include the word square with the measurement units. It's not 108 meters, it's 108 square meters. Mr. Lee has five sections for his vegetable garden. Find the area of each section using the formula A equals B times H. So first we look at the blue section. We can see there's a base of four feet and a height of two feet. We would do four times two. That's eight square feet. For the pink section, we can see this is four feet and this is four feet. So we would do four times four. So the pink section is 16 square feet. For the green section, we can see we have five feet and six feet. We multiply five times six. So the green section is 30 square feet. Now look at the orange section. It says we have one foot here, but look, there's no measurement here. Well, if we look off to the side, we can see that says six feet. And if that's six feet, then that's six feet. We have one times six. And if this six feet was not written here, we could look, because this is a straight line, that this is two feet and this is four feet. And we add that together, that's six feet, which means that's six feet, which means that's six feet. For the purple section, we have a base of 10 feet and a height of two feet. We would multiply 10 times two. So the purple section is 20 square feet. And we could even add these all up and say if this is 10 feet and we've got a two, a four, and a two, that's six, seven, eight, the entire garden would be eight times 10. It would be 80 square feet. We could even find that, couldn't we? Tala bought a rug that measures nine feet by 12 feet Sophia bought a rug that measures five feet by eight feet. How much greater is the area of Tala's rug than Sophia's rug? So we think we can use the area formula to find each area, and we're comparing the areas to find the difference between them. To find the difference, we use subtraction. We can find how much greater Tala's is than Sophia's. And we can draw a quick picture. That might help us. Tala's rug was nine feet by 12 feet. We multiply nine times 12, that's 108 square feet. Sophia's rug was five feet by eight feet. We multiply five times eight, that's 40. We need to find how much greater Tala's is than Sophia's. We use subtraction to find the difference. 108 square feet minus 40 square feet is 68 square feet greater. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. An artist painted a mural on a wall. The height of the mural was 24 inches less than its width of eight feet. What was the area of the mural? So think, first we need to find the height. All we know is that it's 24 inches less than the width of eight feet. And we think, well, 12 inches is equal to one foot so 24 inches is equal to two feet. That means the height was two feet less than eight feet. We do the eight feet minus the two feet 
That means the height was six feet. We can draw a quick picture. We have eight feet for the width and six feet for the height. We multiply eight times six. We know the area of the mural was 48 square feet. So for this problem, we had to first do some subtraction to figure out what the height was. We need to find the area using the formula A equals base times height or area equals side times side. So even though this rectangle is slanted, we can still use the 6 inches as the base and the 3 inches as the height or vice versa. This is the base and that is the height. We're still going to multiply 6 times 3. It's in inches, so the area is 18 square inches. And this square, it's kind of shaped like a diamond, isn't it? It's on a slant. And we know a square has four same side lengths. So even though this says 15 centimeters and we don't see any other measures, we can multiply 15 times 15. We learned how to do two-digit multiplication in video 3.5. And of course, that's linked in the description if you get confused about this. 15 times 15 is 225. That means, because it's in centimeters, the area for the square is 225 square centimeters. In the last lesson, 13.1, which again is linked in the description, we learned about perimeter. And perimeter is the distance around the edges of a figure. The perimeter is like a fence. It's the distance around the outside edges of the figure. Area is the number of square units we need to cover the surface of a figure. So as you're doing these types of problems, make sure you include the word square with your measurements. If it doesn't give a measurement, just say it's a square unit. If it does, make sure you use the correct one. Our next lesson, 13.3, we're going to do the area of combined rectangles. That means we'll have rectangles together and we'll find the area. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.